Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and this is uh, video part two of our uh, lead recovery from our old Portland cement cupels. And I've got our lead blocks here. We're going to melt these guys down today and uh, cupel them again in some real bone ash cupels and see if we can recover any more gold and silver out of them. So the first step here is to get our lead blocks in this little uh, crucible here. We're going to use the same furnace we used for uh, our lead recovery from the Portland cement here. And once the lead's molten, I'm going to try and pour it into a couple different cupels so then we can oxidize the lead and recover the precious metals. So these guys here are the little cupels we're going to be using. Uh, these are pretty big cupels, actually. These can absorb, uh, according to the manufacturer, uh, over 300 grams of lead. I think it's like 350 or 380 grams of lead. Um, they're made typically out of bone ash. Um, and how these work is when the lead becomes molten and starts to oxidize on the top in the furnace, the bone ash cupels uh, absorb the lead oxide like a sponge, but the, the metal stays down here in the, in the very bottom and so you're constantly shedding off the lead oxide into the cupel. And once all the lead is oxidized, you'll be left with a little tiny precious metal bead at the bottom. Um, and we have a bunch of lead, so I'm probably going to use four or five of these um, and, uh, and heat them all at once so we can drive off the lead and hopefully end up with five little tiny beads of precious metal. Here's our lead down in there and it's starting to melt. It's melting pretty quick um, into our crucible. And I have the cupels uh, around the top of the furnace there and they're just heating up. Uh, we'll get them up to maybe three or 400 degrees. Uh, I wanted to get them warm before I poured the molten lead into them uh, just so I didn't have any thermal shock uh, and any breakage on the cupels. All right, so there they are. I got five of them in there. I couldn't fit all seven, but uh, they're they're in there. I I really don't know what's going to happen. We might end up with lead all over the bottom of the furnace, or might up, end up with five little precious metal beads. But we'll get her fired up here and see how it goes. Now what we're seeing here is the lead melts at about 650 degrees Fahrenheit, but the lead oxide doesn't melt until about 1650 degrees Fahrenheit. And so uh, on these cupels, there's a lead puddle underneath there, and now we're just reaching the temperature where the lead oxide on top is starting to melt, and it's sloughing off and being absorbed by the cupel. Now we've reached the temperature where the lead oxide is fully melted and has been absorbed into the cupel. 
and you can see the little dark uh, kind of bubbles of lead oxide that are forming on the surface there and they're just sloughing off they're rolling off down and once they touch the cupel they become absorbed and that process continues on until all the lead is oxidized Our lead buttons are getting quite a bit smaller now as the lead continually oxidizes. And I've kind of experimented a little bit. Um, I didn't want to get it too hot because in some of my old uh, readings I've done, if you get the temperature really high, you're going to start losing some precious metals, especially silver. You want to keep the temperature somewhere between about 1800 to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as keep uh, fresh oxygen flowing to oxidize the lead and keep the temperature even throughout the furnace during the process. And as you can see, this cupel on the far right hand side here uh, is cooler than the rest so it's a little bit hard to do in a gas combustion furnace. I tried my best to get one of these beads blinking over as the last little bit of lead oxidizes. And this bead here, it's a little bit hard to tell because of the heat waves from the furnace, but I think it blinks over right about now. And we're left with our precious metal bead. And here they are out of the furnace. I, I actually can't believe how big those beads are. I thought they'd be tiny little specks. Um, these are the four, one, two, three, four, that ended up oxidizing. The fifth one here that was over the, uh, right next to the, the burner, uh, didn't get hot enough to keep the oxide on top melted. So I'll have to do that one. And then these other two here that uh, I didn't have room for. But man alive, that's, that's a lot of precious metals there um, that were recovered from our crushed up cupels. All right, here's our seven cupels after uh, they've all been uh, oxidized. All the lead's been oxidized. This one here on the uh, on the end, it fell apart when I grabbed it with uh, my tongs, but uh, the other six stayed intact. And as you can see, we recovered uh, quite a bit more gold and silver. So here's our seven little beads, and we ended up with 3.15 grams when it was all said and done. And so I've added our seven little beads. I've put, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 grams of lead uh, in a cupel and I'm going to reuse one uh, that just came out of the furnace and uh, this is again literally just to pull them all together as one single bead and uh, then we can do our analysis on it. Oh look at there the lead's already melting in the <laughs> in the in the crucible or in the cupel it's still warm enough. Okay there they are all pulled together and uh, that cupel broke as well when I got it out and you can see it's it's totally saturated. It's that it, it's gray all the way through, whereas this one on the left still has some of the tan color from the original cupel. So, so here's all our beads kind of conglomerated into one, and uh, I'll get this set up so we can try and figure out the uh, the carat of this gold. It looks like it has quite a bit of silver in it, um, but we'll get an underwater weight and uh, compare it with this weight, and we'll see uh, see what kind of value we have. Okay, now this is kind of goofy looking, but I'll tell you what I'm doing here. So we have the uh, a little uh, jug of water there, and there's a piece of wire going down into the water. It's not touching the cup in any way. It's elevated off the bottom, but it's submerged in the water. We've uh, zeroed the scale, and so we have the weight of the initial button. Now we're going to weigh the amount of water that the button displaces. So when I when I put that gold bead on that little uh, loop on the wire, the water level will rise a little bit and uh, the gold is gonna displace the water and we can weigh the amount of water that we displace and then we can divide the amount of water weight by the original weight of the button and get a, a carat um, uh, value or a percent uh, gold and silver value. So there's our little gold bead sitting on that little wire platform. And you can see the weight on the scale is 0.23 grams. So we've displaced 0.23 grams worth of water. So now let's do a calculation uh, and figure out the density of that button. So here's our little calculation. Our dry gold button weighed 3.14 grams. The amount of water we displaced was 0.23 grams. 
And so when you divide those two, we ended up with 13.65, which is the density of that bead. So there's a bunch of charts online that you can look up the um, density of the bead if it's just gold and silver, and it'll give you the carat gold. And I did that online. I'll post a link to the website um, here in the description. But um, it came out to be about 13 karat gold, which is roughly about 540 parts gold per thousand. And so when you end up uh, doing the math on that, we ended up getting uh, 1.7 grams of gold and 1.44 grams of silver. So not too bad out of uh, a bunch of junk I was just going to throw away. So a couple more thoughts um, before I sign off here. I ended up cupelling about, I don't know, 70 grams or so of gold in uh, all those used cupels we reprocessed. And so that ends up being about uh, two or two and a half percent loss of gold. So we didn't actually lose that much, um, but I cupelled a whole bunch uh, in the Portland cement. So that's uh, one of the reasons why we're seeing so much gold end up here. And another question I'm sure I'm going to get is, uh, can you reuse the lead as a collector metal again um, once it's been recovered from the cupels? And you probably could to a point, but as the base metals start building up in the lead that you're recovering and reusing, um, it's going to get harder and harder to get a good cupel off your, uh, off your buttons and get clean gold. So uh, because lead's so cheap, I just dump the lead that you recover, recycle it, and uh, get new lead from fishing weights or roofing or something like that. So you're, uh, you're using fresh lead every time. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments on what you saw today, please let us know. You can find our contact info in the description below. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.